Israel's military appears to be pushing on with its offensive in Rafah. Israeli tanks are now in the center of the city for the first time. Now, the White House says Israel hasn't crossed any red lines in Rafah, but is warning against escalating the operation. Britt Klanet joins me now from Tel Aviv for more on this. Britt, Israeli tanks have now reached the heart of Rafah, first time that's happened. So what can you tell us? What's the latest there? Diane, we're hearing more reports in Rafah that there's been more Israeli airstrikes and that tanks had mounted raids in central and western areas before retreating. Now, a senior World Health Organization official has also warned that Rafah's last hospital was barely functional and that a full incursion by Israeli troops could lead to its closure and a substantial number of deaths. Now, Diane, the IDF said on Tuesday that troops were operating in a very targeted way against Hamas, uh, Hamas's re remaining battalions there. Uh, from which uh, more than one million Palestinians have fled over the past three weeks. Uh, now, senior Israeli official, uh, one senior Israeli official, rather, has said he expects the war against Hamas in Gaza to continue for at least the rest of the year. This official said, we are expecting another seven months of fighting. That's what he told Israel's Khan Public Radio, Diane. Now, the Biden administration has been warning about Rafah for weeks, uh, and they are condemning innocent lives already lost. But the White House is stopping short of saying that this has crossed a line. Uh, so what do you make of the response from the White House so far and the reaction to it? Yeah, so the White House says it does not believe a major ground operation is underway, uh, which could trigger a change in its policy on military aid to Israel. Now, Israel has insisted that it must take Rafah to achieve victory in the war triggered by Hamas uh, after its uh, horrific attack on October 7th. Uh, but at the same time, Rafah uh, has been a sticking point between the U.S. and Israel, especially in recent weeks. President Biden himself uh, suspending a shipment of uh, weapons to Israel, uh, warning that he does not want them to be used in a full uh, ground invasion of Rafa. So now there's a lot of questions on what exactly is considered a full invasion if you have tanks in the, in the center of Rafa and you're seeing strikes like we did on Sunday, what exactly constitutes uh, the red line uh, for the U.S.? Now, the U.S. built pier uh, has ceased operations now while it's undergoing some repairs. Those are expected to take over a week to complete. And this was one of those efforts to try to get more humanitarian aid to Gaza. So what happens now? Yeah, more desperately needed aid, Diane. Now, U.S. aid efforts, as you say, for Gaza, they've, they've suffered a big kind of embarrassing setback after that temporary pier built by the military broke apart in heavy seas, uh, bad weather, they said, uh, the Pentagon announced. Now, the, that was a $320 million dollar pier, and it was intended to provide a very crucial supply line for aid deliveries by sea to reach um, Palestinians where, where food is short. Uh, now, the effort is on hold for at least a week. Now, I spoke to an official, a U.S. official, who has been operating uh, coordinating that pier, and he said that we've already pulled in uh, the parking lot, the runway, the base uh, into Ashdod. He said it could take a little over a week, hopefully sooner. He said uh, a thousand American soldiers are supporting that operation. He said we've taken it all out, but uh, that they're almost done moving the whole thing uh, to Ashdod, that they want to repair it, and the idea is to bring it back and re-establish the pier and get that aid flow uh, back into Gaza. All right, Brick Clennett in Tel Aviv, thank you.